So looking at my name here on the stage, my name, yes, my given name is Stormy Sylvester Andrews. Wondering what kind of parents would name their kids Stormy Sylvester Andrews. But if you look at my initials backwards, I've had to live with the fact that my initials have been as backwards for my entire life. <laughs> Now, I was in the ethics class yesterday, and in the, ex in the ethics class, Stu said, hey, you know what, you shouldn't use terminology like that because you may offend some people because you may have some ass backwards people in your audience. But I'm like, wait a second, I'm at the NSA. That can't be. So, <laughs> so once again, I am Stormy Andrews. And listen, the information I'm about to give with, to share with you is information that organizations pay my organization thousands of dollars to produce for them, and I'm giving it to you. So, by all means, we're going to go through some training. It's going to be super fast paced. If you're not ready to work and move at a fast pace, I would suggest step out now because I'm going to give you some extremely valuable information. But what I will ask you to do is not attempt to share this process with other people. Make sense? Is that fair enough? Can we agree to that? Yes. Perfect. So let me share what I'm going to share. Let, let me give you an idea of what I'm going to share with you. This exact techniques that I'm going to share with you are techniques that actually got me fired recently. And I know you may be thinking, like, why in the world do I want to hear about a technique that got this guy fired here on the stage? Well, let me ask you a question. Show your hand if you ever had a relationship with one of your clients. I mean, a special relationship. One of those relationships that you thought was going to go on forever. Raise your hands if you can relate, right? So I had one of these clients, our oldest and dearest client, a gentleman that when he originally came to us, he was a $4 million operation, a collision center located in the state of Nevada. He's been with us essentially since we started. He's been with us since 2011. And on uh, April 26th of this year, my 28th wedding anniversary, I get a phone call. And he said, Stormy, I've got to discontinue your services. And I'm like, what? How can this be? You're our longest, most loyal customer. Well, the reason he discontinued our services is because he got an unsolicited offer to buy his business for over $35 million. Good reason to get fired. The cool thing is the next day, that company liked what we had going on and they rehired us to continue the marketing. So I was only fired for a short period of time. And that's what I'm gonna share with you. So I'm gonna ask for some audience participation here, right? And this is gonna be a one clap. So when we raised our hands earlier, that's probably going to be it because I'm gonna ask you to clap if, a single clap if you got a website. Okay, a single clap if you got a Facebook page. What about LinkedIn? If you do any LinkedIn and if, do you do any type of marketing? Do you do any type of advertising? Great, if you didn't clap, this event or this session may not be for you, but if you clap, that's what we're gonna dive into. Here's a problem that's frequent, that, that frequently happens when I deal with, with organizations is, and I'm gonna see if you can relate to this because I'm gonna ask for another clap. Have you ever been caught up or distracted by one of these? <laughs> Absolutely. These squirrels are a problem, aren't they? Because once you get caught up in one squirrel, what happens? There's another and another and another and they don't stop and these squirrels are expensive. Now let me tell you what I've experienced. The reason that most organizations get caught up in these squirrels is because they're operating off of a subpar strategy. Can you relate? And the reason I say a subpar strategy is because whatever strategy they're using is not delivering results. Fair enough? Can you relate? So following this buyer persona is designed to eliminate these squirrels out of your life. Are you with me? Yep. You ready to eliminate some squirrels? Sir. I said, are you ready to eliminate some squirrels? Sir. Okay, good. Then that's what we're going to do because it all starts with the buyer personas. Now, raise your hand if you've ever built a buyer persona. And let me ask if you can relate to this because most buyer personas look like this. They're weak. <laughs> they need to hit the gym. Oftentimes I meet with organizations and I ask that question, do you have a buyer persona? They're like, yeah, I've got a buyer persona. I'm, go, I'm like, where is it? They're like, it's probably on some shelf, dusty because they've never really used it. And the reason that they didn't use it is because it was full of a whole bunch of demographic information. Now that I've got this buyer persona, what am I supposed to do with it? Can you relate? Yes. Absolutely. So a better buyer persona would be one that hits the gym that looks a little stronger. Kind of like this, this gentleman right here, Anton, right? So I actually used him as the model here. So a little bit of a stronger buyer persona. Do you think that's what you need? But a stronger buyer persona, and there's many of them in the marketplace, I don't think they're good enough either. Because we're talking about the world's best buyer persona. I'm in a room with a, a bunch of experts. And I know that's a pretty strong claim and you're about to find out, but today there's a worksheet in your seat. We're gonna fill out this worksheet together. Remember I asked, are you ready to work? We're gonna fill out this worksheet because I wanna give you the, 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 the tools that you can take back 
when you get home and start executing this process. Now, feel free to write all over the sheet because when you leave, I have extras in the back that you can take with you. This way you've got this one to use as your template. You've got a blank one that you can build your own with, fair enough? And then today, because we've got 35 minutes, we're actually working on its little brother and I think you will appreciate that. Its little brother is called the World's Best Buyer Persona Instant Campaign. Give me a clap if you ever posted something on Facebook or, and you plan to post something on Facebook again in the future. LinkedIn, YouTube, you gonna put more content on your website? Perfect, and we're talking about the right thing. What I'm going to recommend, the process we're gonna go through, spend 30 minutes before you create your next, mess your next messaging, filling the sheet out and your results will improve. Fair enough? By the way, I believe in participation and I'm from Las Vegas. One of the things that I have sitting at this table are casino chips, commemorative chips from a legitimate casino. So if I get phenomenal participation, I'm passing these out and many of them are black. What is a black chip? $100. So I will be passing those out. Are you down for that? Yes. Cool. So the world's best buyer persona. In order to have the world's best buyer persona, there's several things you must understand. First of all, you've got to understand how your prospects make decisions. Make sense? Yes. How often do we create messaging and we're thinking, we're, we haven't even given any thought to our prospects how they make decisions. We're going to change that from this point forward once and for all. If you don't do that, you're just noise in the marketplace, folks. Who wants to be noise? The other thing you must also understand is the buyer's journey. How does, how did your, 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 your potential prospect get to where they got to and where did they start? We have to understand their journey. How did they get here? What made them pick up the phone or fill out a form on your website to reach out to you? If you don't understand that, once again, you're just noise. So let's talk about the buyer's journey for just a second. Many of you are going to find this statistic that I'm about to share with you extremely interesting. So the buyer's journey, we've broken it down into three stages. There's something called the awareness stage, the consideration stage, and the decision stage. Are you with me? Yes. Perfect. So when we talk about that, just, uh, when, when people come and visit your website, Statistically speaking, do you think more people are in the awareness and consideration stage or do you believe the majority of the people are in the decision stage? So for those of you that think the awareness and consideration stage, let me hear a clap. Those of you that think the decision stage, let me hear a clap. Oh, that, was, that one was a little bit lighter. Well, statistically speaking, 96% of the people that come across your digital assets are in the awareness and decision <laughs> stage. They're not ready to do business with you. Only 4% are ready to do business with you and they're probably potentially looking at your competitors too. So it's not just you, it's you and the other people that are just like you. You make sense? Yep. So, and this source came from HubSpot in 2015. So let's do a little exercise here. Let's assume you got a dollar. Everyone's got a dollar? Does everyone have a dollar? Yes. Good. So let's assume that it cost you a dollar to get a set of eyeballs to look at your digital footprint. For the sake of argument, let's just say it's your website, but this would apply to YouTube, this applies to Facebook, whatever, but let's just say it's your website. So if you've got a dollar to get a set of eyeballs to look at your digital assets and you got $100, how many people do you get to look at your digital assets? 100 people, right. So we got some mathematicians here, which is good. So we got $100 and here's your 100 people. These are the people looking potentially to hire you, fair enough? So I'm gonna ask you a question. Which group is more valuable to you? Which group is more valuable? Is it the four people that are ready to do business now? They're gonna make a decision immediately. Is that group more valuable? Or, I've whited out their faces, is it the other 96 that may be six months, a year, two years, three years? Which group's more valuable? 96. The 96, absolutely, but it's a trick question because they're both valuable. <laughs> the problem is most of the competition that I see on digital assets are geared towards people ready to do business now. It's actually kind of selfish. It's no different than the pushy salesperson at the car lot. Can you relate? Have you been with that person that wants you to buy a car or wants you to spend your money based on their schedule and not yours? Not cool. So why would we create messaging and put ourselves in the same situation? It's about creating messaging for the awareness and consideration stage. And guess what? Here's the beauty of it. There's very little competition up here because your competitors, and this holds true in virtually every industry that I've ever come across, tends to create their messaging and geared towards the people in the decision stage. And this is the beauty. So when we start talking about this awareness and consideration stage stuff, that 200 million in additional revenue that we've generated for our clients, this is where it happens because we're getting upstream. Got me? So your greatest opportunity is here 
your greatest struggle is continuing to create messaging just for the people in the decision stage. So have you asked yourself, what is your buyer's journey, right? What are they asking Google? Have you ever thought about that? I mean, what are they physically asking Google? Oftentimes people are thinking about keywords. I want to show up for this and I want to show up for that. But if your clients aren't asking Google those questions, who cares, right? Who cares? And then what are they asking Google in the awareness stage versus the consideration stage, right? So let's do an exercise. And this exercise is when we're going to dive into this worksheet that we're going to fill out together. Let's meet Kate. Kate's 35 years old. She's an HR coordinator making about $45,000 a year. And she works for this pretty good sized corporation. One day Kate shows up to work. Her boss calls her in the room and says, Kate, come on up to the conference room. We've got to have a meeting. Now, Kate's a little perplexed, perplexed because she hasn't been invited to the corporate conference room before. When she gets into the conference room, she has all of her managers and all the other department managers sitting there staring at her when she walked in the room. They're all smiling for joy and they're telling, great, they're telling Kate how great she is, the value that she brings to the company and she is an up and coming star. They continue this path of blowing smoke at Kate. <laughs> of telling her how great she is, and then they let her know that we've got this conference coming up a year from now. We've got a $400,000 budget, Kate, and because we trust you, we want you to run the whole deal. Do you think that happens in corporate America? Yeah. If you don't, I come from corporate America, I can tell you it happens every day. Kate's being voluntold that she gets to have the honor of putting together the next corporate event, and she has this huge, massive budget. It happens every single day in corporate America, and later on in the presentation, when I start giving away goodies, I will give you the statistics. So when Kate, do you think Kate has a decision? Can she turn it down? No. No. They're asking her, does she want to do it? But does she have a choice? No. Absolutely not. Kate has no choice and whatsoever. So when Kate leaves that room, how do you think she's feeling? Do you think she's feeling like this? No. Kate's freaking out. She leaves the room and she's like, oh, I've got to do this. Do you think Kate's going to, do you think her bosses are, are going to allow Kate to put this event on and not worry about her normal daily responsibilities. No, no it's not gonna happen. Kate's freaking out, right? So let's dive into your worksheet because in what we're gonna do is here, we're gonna start filling out some basic information on the sheet. Now I'm gonna help you out because we're limited for time. So we're gonna fill out her name, job title, age, income, etc. right? So what was her name? Kate. Let's call her Stressed Out Kate. I think that's a better name, right? So on your sheet, let's write down Stressed Out Kate. We're gonna fill this out together. How old is Kate? Ooh, where'd I hear that from? I heard a couple of people. Who said it first? Out of integrity right here, we got a 35, there's a $100 chip for you, right? This one here, oh, you messed up, because the next one's a $500 chip. Where'd the only come from, from this side over here? Where was the first one? Back here. I just need a hand, a volunteer, there we go. There's your chip. So, Kate's 35, or excuse me, I, I got 34 up here, I'm wrong. I mean, I'm, <laughs> but she makes about $45,000 a year, I blew it, and her job title, she's an HR coordinator, right? So let's think about this for a second. What situation needs to be resolved for Kate? Does Kate need to have a speaker right now? Do you think that's a situation? No. Oftentimes, she certainly doesn't need a speaker. She's not thinking about me. She may be thinking about me, she may be thinking about you, she may not be thinking about us six months, a year down the road, right? What Kate needs is, she needs to know what she does not know. Has she ever done this before? No. No. Kate's been voluntold, she's never done this before, and is Kate in the 96% of the 4%? 96. 96%, good, we're paying attention. So with Kate being in the 96%, she needs to coordinate a successful event, right? Is that a fair statement? Can we roll with that? Yes. So let's write down on your sheet. She needs to coordinate a successful event, and guess what? If you've got a better answer, by all means, write it down. This is an exercise, this is just one way based on some stuff we put together. And what does Kate want? Kate wants answers to the what and how to do it right. That's what she wants. It's really what it comes down to. She doesn't want to speak here. She just wants to know, how do I do this? So the question is, what do you think Kate's asking Google? Do you think it's fair that Kate's, some of the Kate's of the world's turning to Google? Yes. Absolutely. So what she's asking Google, do you think it's fair to say that Kate might be asking Google for corporate event planning ideas? Yes. Absolutely. And you can write that in your A box. But it's fair enough she's going to be asking Google some corporate event planning ideas. Do you think it's fair to say that Kate might be asking for a corporate event planning checklist? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Do you think it's possible she may be asking Google things to consider when planning an event? Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Or how to organize a corporate event or 
things needed for corporate events. Can we all agree that it's possible? Kate, in the awareness stage, never having to do this before, being voluntold that these are some searches she may start off with. Yes. So I agree with you. So I did a search in my office on May 27th when I found out I'm speaking in influence. I'm like, these are some pretty good awareness stage questions. And I wonder how many speakers show up on the front page of Google when I search these five phrases. How many speakers do you think showed up on the front page of Google for any of these phrases? Zero. Three, zero? Seven. Zero. Zero. Not one single speaker. Guess what that tells me? That tells me there's an opportunity. Because when I do this for other organizations, I do the same process and guess what I find? Lots of zeros. And when I find lots of zeros, my, my, I start to smile because I know I'm about to make my client lots of money and then things are good for the foreseeable future. So, when I put this presentation together, uh, a gentleman by the name of Darren LaCroix has a program called Stage Time University. So I went to Darren, I'm like, Darren, I got this new program. I got 35 minutes to put, to put, to put it together. Do you think I could share this with your audience? He says, sure, Stormy, come on down. So that was on June 21st. So as I'm giving this presentation and I'm sharing that the fact that there was zero, I saw Darren taking pictures of the screen. I'm like, what's going on here? Why is this guy taking pictures of my screen? That's this guy in the back of the room. He actually ruined my presentation because there used to be zero, but he applied what I taught you, what I'm sharing with you today, and there's now one person <laughs> on the front page following my presentation. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You're killing me. I wanted to go with the zeros. And I took pictures. How to choose a keynote speaker. He's in the number two, number two spot on YouTube. And guess what? He did this in less than a week. He did not use my help. He's not a, uh, you know what I mean? He just followed what we're sharing with you today. And then he kind of made up his own. He keep, uh, combined two where it says things to consider when planning a corporate event uh, planning checklist, which I think is very valid. And he's in the number one spot in Google and he did it in a week. He didn't hire a company like me. You don't need to hire a company like me. You just need to understand what your clients are doing. So. In the, word, uh, in the words of Mike Rayburn, what if, right? What if, what if you started showing up when the Cates of the world started searching for corporate event planning ideas? What could that do to your business, right? What could it do for you? What if you started showing up for the other phrases that I showed you, how to organize a corporate event or corporate event planning checklist? What if? Now, if you've never done this sort of thing before, let me show you how easy it is, right? Start off and take a guess of what you think Kate's or your ideal clients may be searching. And you start typing it in Google. So here's an example. I typed in how to do, how do you plan a corporate, right? So when I type this in, you know, for me, I've got fancy tools to do this, but if you don't have them, here's a manual way you can do it. Go to Google and type in part of your sentence. And if you look below it, Google will start telling you what's being searched. It fills in the rest of the answer. And they're ranked in order of popularity. Google isn't guessing. Google's putting this up here because how to plan any corporate event is, more, is searched more often than the second one here. How to plan a corporate event checklist and so on and so on. Make sense? Yeah. Now, let's say if you go there and you're like, you know what, this isn't quite the results I'm looking for. What do you think you need to do then? Well, scroll to the bottom of the page. Because at the bottom of the page of Google, Google says, hey, here's some other suggestions. Here's some searches that are similar to the search you just attempted, and then you can start the whole process over. So they said, when people search this, they've also searched this. So they're giving you this semantic connection to help you out. Does that make sense? Yes. Were you aware of that? Yes. So pretty good tool for some of you, right? And for others, you knew it. So you've already written this down, this A, B, C, and D stuff, right? Yes. Is that beneficial? Yes. So what if you built the resources to answer those questions? We're full of room professional speakers. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So, do you believe that you have the ability of putting together a corporate event planning checklist? Mm -hmm. And if Kate came by your website looking, or if she started searching on Google for a corporate event planning checklist and she comes across your website and you have a resource that's pretty awesome, you put some time, energy, and effort into it, do you think it's possible that the Kates of the world will find that valuable? Yeah. Do you think that's a great way to start the relationship? Do you think that helps you eliminate the competition? Because if you can start the relationship then, when it's time for her to get a speaker, especially if you do it with no sales pressure, folks, don't add the sales pressure. Just be there to provide the value. 
This is where I run the problem with my business owners. Because they're like, no, no, I want to sell, sell, sell. I'm like, stop it. I want to slap their hands. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Let's do it what works. So if you created the resources, think it'll help you build trust? Yes. Help you eliminate the competition? Yes. Give you more opportunities? Yes. Absolutely. So in Robert Caldini's, present, in, 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 uh, uh, Caldini's presentation here, in his six steps, what was number one? Reciprocity. Right here. Where'd that come from? Right here. Absolutely. Reciprocity. Let's say if you got a lot of Kate's coming to your website and she's asking for topics you don't speak on. Do you think those are valuable leads to you? Yes. Because let's say if you're that person, you're that guy, you're that gal, you're that person that just has leads that are just coming in, even if they're not right for you, but then you can reach out to other speakers in the industry and start passing out those leads. What would that do for your business? Because now you're in this situation to where you've provided revenue and resources to other speakers. Do you think the law of reciprocity is going to kick in? Yes. Absolutely, it's extremely powerful. If we stop now, did you get value? Yes. Well, guess what, do you wanna stop now? No. Me either, because we got more time, so we're gonna continue. <laughs> so, let's go back to Kate here. Raise your hands if you like to work with Kate. Most of you in the room. Most of you in the room like to work with Kate. So, let's determine how Kate will make decisions. Do you think Kate will make decisions based on emotions, or do you think Kate's gonna make her decisions based on logic? Emotions. Who said logic? Everyone said emotions. Man, I tell you, this is tough. Yeah, 80% of their decisions are based on emotions. That's why emotions kicks logic butt every single time. So Kate's going to make decisions based on emotions. But why is it when I come across postings on, on, on YouTube, when I come across postings on social media, and more importantly, when I come across websites, they're just full of logic after logic after logic. There's virtually no attempt to connect with your ideal clients emotionally. It's a disconnect. Can you relate? Yeah. We got to think about that. If they make their decisions, if Kate makes her decisions based on emotions, we want to have messaging that ties into Kate's emotions, right? So let's talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I'm assuming that many of you are familiar with it, but if you're not, I'm going to give you like a, a quick 30 second rundown on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow's hierarchy of needs has um, basically has come to the conclusion that when we make decisions, we make decisions in this, uh, in this structure here. Uh, and our, you know, we have to satisfy certain needs as we make our decisions. So the strongest needs uh, as it comes to making decisions are physiological. The physiological needs are the decisions that we make that keep us alive. You know, air, food, water, shelter, the stuff that allows us to, you know, live our lives. Followed by safety needs, I want to make a, uh, you know, I want to stay safe, love and belonging, I want to belong to a tribe, right? And then esteem. So the scenario is if someone is concern about where their next meal is going to come from, do you think they're paying too much attention about the esteem side of things? No. no. This is ranked in order of strength. The bottom is the strongest needs that need to be made, worked our way up. So let's talk about Kate. What problems do you think this has caused for Kate? Let's talk about Kate problems for just a moment. Do you think, being that she's been voluntold, right? Do you think that she has the fear of the unknown? Yes. yes. Do you think she doesn't know what to do? Yes. Do you think she's she knows she's got a greater workload coming. Yes, yes. Absolutely. And do you think there's time management, that she's afraid she's going to have some time management issues? Absolutely. And you can write those in box number seven. You can write those in box number seven. And like I said, we're going to move at a rapid pace. Are we good there? So everything I put on the screen, when you see text, that means we're going to write it down someplace. But is it fair? Do we have any disagreement that these are potential problems that Kate's facing, right? So. If Kate's facing these problems, we need to determine, and this is going to be box number eight, these problems lead to what, you know, what emotions? Do you think it's fair as it pertains to the emotions? Do you think she's scared? Fear. 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 Who said fear? fear? Right here. You know what? We got to, I got to throw this on because it's fear. Throw some more out there. What else? Anxiety. Anxiety. Yes. Anxiety's there. Where did I get anxiety? <coughs> Way in the back. I'm going to throw this to you, Darren. If you can give this here, I'd appreciate it. There's anxiety. Absolutely. You think she's a little insecure? Yes. Apprehensive about it? Yes. Absolutely she is, right? So we want to write those there. There. So on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, she's got to make a decision. And if these are her emotions, do you guys mind if I get down here with us? Sure. Good. I'm going to get down here with us. So if we get here on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, what do you think? Do you think this is a physiological? Uh, do you think she's going to make decisions based on physiological esteem? Safety. Where did I hear safety? safety? I heard safety back here first, right over here. Here we go. Safety it is. She needs to make a safe decision, right? She absolutely needs to make a safe decision because she's scared she's got to make a safe decision so what are her beliefs 
So let's talk about her belief system for just a moment. So do you think it's, uh, do you think that she believes if everything goes right, right? It's like pretty rainbows and unicorns, everything's perfect. Do you think she believes that she might be in line for a promotion? Yeah. Do you think it's possible that she's gonna be awed within her, with her coworkers? Yeah. Do you think it's possible that she's gonna have pride in her job? Yeah. What about the status within her organization? Do you think that'll make a world of difference? Yeah. Absolutely. Or, uh, and then what if everything goes wrong with Kate? Fired, I heard fired from back there someplace and this corner was a, right here. So let's hear, there's a fire. Embarrassed, humiliated, stressed, insecure, ashamed. It's absolutely the case that it's possible that Kate's going to be feeling this way, right? So if we understand that if we're going to create messaging, do you think we can make better messaging just by understanding this alone? Absolutely, because once again, it goes back to safety needs. The safety uh, uh, needs. The question is, is your messaging safe? Is your messaging talking to esteem? Kate's not concerned about the esteem. Kate's concerned about making a safe decision, making sure that she's doing business with the right person. You can start that safety by creating these resources for Kate, where she's going along her buyer's journey. You're holding her hand. You're not giving her any undue pressure. You're just helping her along the path. So let's talk about the awareness stage, right? So now Kate's in the awareness stage. So like, what would Kate be doing in the awareness stage, right? So we already said that things to consider when planning an event, right? We already came up with that one. So if that was the example that if Kate was searching online, do you think, like, what could I put out there that would attract the Kates of the world? What if I created something that said, 22 corporate event planning, I, planning mistakes to avoid? Do you think Kate would resonate with that? Do you think Kate's gonna resonate too? Hey, I'm the best speaker on the planet, come and hire me because, no, this is something that's gonna resonate with Kate. And here's the trick, folks. If this is gonna be your headline and you think that's what she's searching, when she's searching this phrase, look on Google. If someone already has a 22 corporate event planning mistakes to avoid, what I would do is come up with 24 and call it the 2019 edition. <laughs> Make sense? You gotta make yours where she wants to click on it. So is that fair? So this here, if we see this AELSP, because you're gonna put that there and this just coordinates to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So P is physiological, S is safety. Uh, love is love, you know, L is love and belonging, then esteem and then self-actualization. So is it fair to say that's a safety? Do you think that's a safety message? Mm -hmm. That's absolutely a safety message. So now we know if we're attracting the Kates, I wanna put safety messaging out there if I'm gonna do something on social media or on my website. So let's think about consideration stage. So in the consideration stage, do you think, because now she's moved along the process, right? She's educated herself. Now she's thinking, okay, at this stage, which maybe sometime in the future, I need to hire a speaker. And if I need to hire a speaker on selecting speakers for a conference, you know what, before I get there, guess how many speakers show up for this? What? Zero. Darren didn't do anything here. Zero. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Selecting speakers for a conference? Zero. There's huge opportunity there. Zero when I did my search on May 27th. So, consideration stage. Let's think about it. I need a safe message for Kate. I need a safe message, safe message, safe message, right? What about this one? You only get one shot at this. How to select the right speaker for your conference. Whoa. That headline just might work. Because do you think, and Kate, do you think Kate thinks she has two choices, two, two uh, shots at this? She's got one. And if you're the person letting her know you're speaking to the emotions and the feelings and the anxiety and all the other stuff that she's experiencing, you're gonna have a leg up with the competition. So, do you think that is a safety type of message? Yes. Absolutely. Because remember, she's only got one shot of this. We're letting her know, check it out. She may agree or disagree, but this is something that may resonate with the Kates of the world. So in the decision stage, guess what? This is Kate, she's ready to make a decision. We're not talking about this part today, but basically if she's looking for keynotes, keynotes under 2000, I just say schedule a consultation, right? Let's get this over with, let's move forward. But if I'm part of that journey and I'm creating resources and messaging for the Kates of the world, I'm gonna get to her before other speakers. And that's your opportunity. So, well, working with you, this is what you have to answer as she's reading your messaging. Will working with you make her feel 
And remember, these are just feelings. Remember, it's emotions. Will it make, it, will it make her feel like there's a chance that I'm going to get a promotion because I just chose the best speaker on the planet as it pertains to my event? I just, do you, know, do you think she's going to have pride in the speaker that she selected? Absolutely, right? So here's what I want you to stop doing. Stop this tactical approach stuff. And the tactical approach stuff that I see often is businesses and organizations that just throws messaging after messaging after messaging. No rhyme, no reason. And I think it's no different than buying a lottery ticket. As a matter of, I, as a matter of fact, I think buying lottery tickets is probably a better investment. Because how many of you have just thrown money after one thing, after another, after another, after another? Did you make money or you lose it? You lose it. This gives you a strategy that you can move forward regardless what you're doing, regardless how you're, who you're working with, and stop wasting your money. So I challenge you to prove me wrong. I challenge you, go for it. Prove me wrong. I would love to hear it because this process works. So you guys want to hear about a free offer? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, before the free offer, let me tell you about my podcast. If you like my type of message, I have a podcast called Powerhouse Experts, and I've had some an extreme powerhouses on there. If you believe you're a power horse, a powerhouse, not a power horse, the top of your industry, uh, reach out to me. Maybe we can get you on the show, but I've had people like Alan Weiss. I had the guy that Disney and Apple turns to when they're looking for branding advice. It's a business podcast show, but it's fun because me and my co-host talks a lot of crap to one another while you're learning stuff. So if you like to laugh while you're learning from some of the best people in the industry, check it out here, 600keywords.com. Let me tell you what I have my staff doing. I shared five keyword phrases with you, right? How would you like 601 keyword phrases that the Kates of the world are searching monthly translates to about 45,000 searches per month. Do you think that's enough to satisfy everyone here in this room? Yes. Absolutely. And let me tell you what happens after this. Fortunately for you, my, my company, Yoko Local, we deal with organizations that are doing between five and $30 million a year. So you don't have to worry about any sales pressure from me. This is my gift to you. When you download this offer, you're gonna get a list that my team put together. It's gonna to tell you the phrase it's going to tell you how many times it's searched on Google each month, and it's going to show you where it shows up on Google platforms. Is it showing up as text, or is it showing up with video? It's going to tell you when you see the word search, SERP, it's going to tell you how it's showing up on Google, and this is your gift, about 45,000 searches uh, for you. So remember those chips I passed out? So they're from the Dunes Casino in Las Vegas. That was imploded about 20 years ago. So those chips are worthless. But the point is, <laughs> the point is, just because something was once valuable and it worked for you doesn't mean it's still valuable, right? But I just don't want the lucky people to get casino chips, to get the casino chips. When you leave today, Jim Root's standing in the back. I brought enough casino chips for everyone here in this room. You're gonna reach your hand into a bag. Some of you may get $100 chips. That's what I have the greatest quantity. I've got some $500 chips, $1,000 chips, and I got a couple of $25,000 chips. So I encourage you to reach your hand in the bag, grab a chip. And you know, that's just my gift that I brought to you from Las Vegas. And here's something that I would ask you to do. I've been looking, this is my first time at Influence ever. I'm a rookie, they took a chance on me. I'm gonna ask you to use your app and leave an honest review. And I want an honest review. I don't want those, hey, you know, he's a kind of a cool guy. Let me give him these great reviews because he's a cool guy. Give me an honest review because this tells me where I need to take my game to the next level. You have the ability of giving me a one star. Awesome. You have the ability of giving me a five star or anything else in between. But this is how the NSA knows who is bringing valuable to you or who is bringing value to you. So with that being said, I would say follow the techniques I shared with you and let it rain. Just let it rain. I thank you. <laughs>